also, and Suzanne was sharing about her group, uh, this feeling of, um, of being kind of addicted to the story. So there's like a story that's being told or a storyline that's repeating over and over and over. And you get a sense that the healing has to be beyond the storyline. And yet it's like a, just a bad habit that just you find yourself thinking and speaking in those terms over and over. Repeating the same stories. Kind of like, you know, in movies when two people meet at a restaurant or whatever for the first time and and they start talking and they, one or the other or both pour their hearts out and they pour out their their stories. Here's my story. Well, here's my story. Oh, a moment of intimacy. Two stories have been told. But now with the Course, it's we're sensing that the intimacy goes much deeper than the stories. We have to actually let go of the purpose underneath for telling the stories. Some of you might have seen that movie, I Heart Huckabees with Lily Tomlin, Dustin Hoffman, Jude Law. It's a very good movie, but in that movie Jude Law is always telling a Shania Twain story about he pulled a fast one over on Shania Twain, I think it's around chicken salad or something, and, and he tells the story over and over and over through the movie until the existential detectives, Lily Tomlin, and Dustin Hoffman start to work with him on why do you tell that story? What are the feelings of inadequacy? Why, why by putting down Shania Twain, someone who seems to be popular, uh, this popular put down put, lifts, lifts him up, lifts his image up in some way, mm -hmm. like he pulled a fast one on Shania Twain. And what's underneath that is there's great fear and inadequacy so we have to get to the underlying motives of why we tell our stories. Otherwise, they just seem to repeat over and over, and we may not even be consciously aware of why we're telling the same stories over and over. Maybe it's attention getting. Maybe it's a sense that we think it gives us a pseudo sense of superiority or power or control or pride. Oftentimes stories are told because there's this pride in the story. Uh, my grandmother got up into her 80s and 90s and was diagnosed with dementia. And she would typically repeat stories to me from back in the late 1920s. Uh, the same stories over and over back in the, the abundant era right before the depression hit the United States. And she would tell the stories over and over and over. She was also very deep into the Bible. Uh, didn't believe that death was real, didn't believe that God would ever send anyone to hell. We used to have great discussions, and at one point, it, she was telling her stories from the late 1920s, 1927, 1928, for the umpteenth time, and then Jesus, through me, said, what's the purpose of the story? And she just was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And I said, what's the, what's the purpose of the story you just told me? She said, I don't know. <laughs> I said, well, it has to have a purpose. She says, it does. I said, well, there must be a purpose beneath the story. If you tell me the story repeatedly, she said, oh, I, don't, I don't know. I can't. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if there is a purpose. And I said, I said, well, you love Jesus. She said, oh, yes, I love Jesus. I no doubt about that. And, said, and in the Gospels, you know, he would tell stories too. He would t tell parables, but he would tell the parable of the prodigal son and the parable of the, the, the one who owns the farm, who pays all the workers the same amount, even though the first ones that work all day and the ones that just come in at the last second, he pays them all the same. He said he always had a purpose, there was always a reason for telling his stories. He was teaching a message, he had a lesson, or whatever. She said, you're right. Said, Every single story he ever had, it always had a purpose. And she said, that's right. He said, so what's the purpose of your story? I don't know. She said, I, she said, I, I don't know. I, I think I just like it. <laughs> she was very honest with me always, I think I just like it. And that's it. We like these stories, even if they don't have a purpose. We're willing to tell them to a stranger, over and over. 
because we like them. We actually like the stories. We're addicted to telling stories. We're, we've all become storytellers and now it, we're so addicted to it that we don't want to stop. But the Course is teaching us that we need to have a purpose for our stories. We need to use words in a purposeful way to inspire and to bless. And if our stories have achy breaky heart, you know, sad songs, you know, all kinds of heartbreak and pain and misery, or if we keep retelling our nightmares over and over and over and over, what's the purpose of telling nightmares? You know, is that to inspire and bless? Do we really feel that we're helping all of humankind by telling our nightmare stories, you know? as we watch their faces shocked and horrified, you know. Is that, or is that, is there a bit of pride in my nightmares bigger and worse than yours will ever be? And don't you forget it, you know. There's, there has to be a reason and a purpose. 